Welcome to the third and final lecture on approximate analysis for lateral load. In this lecture, we are going to see factor method and an example on it. So, compared to previous two methods, which is Potter method and Candleva method, this factor method is more accurate. And also, it is specifically useful when the moment of inertia of different members are different. Okay. Especially when there is a difference in moment of energy for the beam elements. Okay, so the basis of this method is similar to that of a uh, moment distribution method, which states as the at any joint, the joint moment is shared by all its member in proportion to their stiffness, which means that the stronger members will have more moments and weaker moments will get less moments okay and the concept which we already saw in moment distribution method is the carry over factor so here also the same thing is that half the moment gets carried over to the far end because you can see that in a frame the all the ends are considered to be fixed in factor methods the columns and girders are treated as separate entities that is we have to separate out the, all the columns and separate out all the beams and write it out differently okay the first thing we have to find out is the girder factors and column factors so in order to find out girder factor and column factors it is important to list up the relative stiffness of each of the member which is k is equal to i by n so difference in moment of inertia and difference in length of each member can be separated using relative stiffness accounted using relative stiffness k next thing we have to find out is girder factor ratio it is important to find note that girder factor for all the corners meeting at a particular joint will be same and column factor for all the corners meeting at a joint will be same so in order to find out girder factor g what we have to do is find the summation of relative stiffness of all the columns meeting at the particular joint all divided by summation of relative stiffness of all the members meeting at the joint so in what it is important to note that for beam or girder factor columns comes in the numerator okay and not similarly in order to find out the column factor to joint the formula it is called as c it is formula is summation of relative stiffness of all the beams meeting at the joint divided by summation of relative stiffness of all the members meeting at the joint it is quite obvious that c is going to be 1 minus g once we have find out the column factor and girder factor, the next thing we have to we are going to find out is moment factor for a member. So moment factor are again divided into column moment factors C as well as B moment factor G. So now for the formula for column moment factor is CM into K, where CM is nothing but column factor of that particular member plus half of the column factor for the far end and similarly gm is girder factor of that particular member plus half of the girder factor of the far end let's say for example for the member ad cm is going to be column factor of ad plus half of column factor for da and it is important to note that k is the relative stiffness of the member for which we are finding c or g okay the next important thing which come in calculation is sigma c and sigma g so whenever we see sigma c it is the sum of the column moment factor for all the columns in a particular story and when you see sigma g it is the sum of beam moment factor capital g for all the beams meeting at a joint only thing the next step will be to find out the column moment and beam moment so the formula for finding the column moment is mc is equal to mt into c by sigma c where mc is the column moment for that particular column mt is the total moment for a particular story c is the column moment factor for the particular column and sigma c is sum of column moment factor for a particular story 
it has to be noted that this sigma c by c is something familiar familiar it is actually distribution factor df okay once we have the quarter moment mc the next step will be to find out the b moment where b moment mb is found out by the equation sigma f mc into dfp where sigma mc denotes the sum of quarter moments of all the corners meeting at a particular joint multiplied by dfp where dfp is g by sigma g where g is the column beam moment factor for the particular beam all divided by sum of all the beam moment factor meeting at a joint okay now with that background let's see an example we are given a frame with two stories and two base there are two loads acting so you can see that for the top story the total moment will be only from the top loading 40 and it is going to be 40 into 3.5 and for the bottom story the moment is going to come from both the 40 and 80 kilonewton forces so it is going to be 40 into 8.5 multiplied by 5 into 80 okay so these two values are empty values for different so here we have noted down the total column moment for top story as 40 into 3.5 and for bottom story it is 40 into 8.5 plus 80 into 5 so this is actually m t okay. now we start the problem you have to make a neat table for this okay the first thing you have to do is list out all the joints and all the members meeting at that particular joint so the columns are entered in separate columns and beams are entered in separate columns it is to be noted that whatever entries is in pink is corresponding to columns and whatever entries is in gray is corresponding to beams okay so please note for joint D there are three members which is D A a column, D E a beam, and D C a column. Okay. The next thing you have to find out is relative stiffness K. So relative stiffness you can note that here I value is not varying, so relative stiffness is nothing but one by L. So note down the relative stiffness of each of the members as one by L. For D A it is one by five, for D it is one by five, again for D G it is one by three point. Similarly note the relative stiffness for each of the members. Once you do that, the next thing you have to find out is the sum of relative stiffness for a particular joint, which is for joint D, it is nothing but 0.2 plus 0.2 plus 0.286. Similarly, find the sum of K for all the joints. Once you do that, the next step is to find out the column factor and girder factor. Girder factor. So, as we, as we told, column factor is sum of relative stiffness of all the beams divided by total relative stiffness so c is going to be sum of all the relative stiffness of beams at a joint that is 0 0.2 here divided by 0 0.686 it is going to be 0 0.29 and girder factor g is actually sum of relative stiffness of all the columns which is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.286 0 0.486 divided by summation of k which is 0 0.686 it is going to be 0 0.7 so similarly find out the column factor and girder factor for other joints also okay so please note for columns in same joint will be having same value of column factor the next step we have to do is to find out c by 2 and g by 2 which is for nothing for finding the cm and gm values so c by 2 and g by 2 is actually the column factor or girder factor or the far end then for example for da c by 2 is going to be column factor of ad divided by 2 so column factor of ad is 1 this divided by 2 is going to be 0.5 for ad for de this is going to be column factor of member ed divided by 2 so column factor of member ed is 0.59 
divided by 2 is 0.3 so in this manner you can find out c by 2 and g by 2 values once you get that you can find out cm and gm value it is nothing but c plus c by 2 or g plus g by 2 so this the column number enter as 7 is going to be nothing but 5 plus 6 so you have cm and gm value once you have cm and gm value you can find out the moment factors that is column moment factor and girder moment factor so column moment factor c is going to be cm into its relative stiffness so cm is already found out in table 7 column number 7 so for the member ta capital c is going to be 0.79 multiplied by 0.2 which is 0.158 similarly you can find out capital c for all the columns as well as capital c for all the girders so once you find this you can also find out the summation of c so it is important to note that summation of c is taken for two stories separately for top story we will be having capital c for dg eh fi then gd hg and if you can see correspondingly for top story we will be taking c values 0 0.169 0 0.194 0 0.1 1064 fi then 0.212 for gd 0 0.215 for he and 0 0.1234 if so summation of c for top story is going to be 1.019 and summation of c for bottom story is going to be 1.176 okay. also not note that we have entered the values of mt which is nothing but we have two values one is for top stories and one other is for bottom story for bottom story we have 740 for all the columns in bottom story will be having corresponding value is 740 and all the columns in the top story will be having values as empty value is 140 once you do that the next step is to find out the column moment mc which is nothing but mt into c by sigma c so mt is going to be so mc is going to be for the column da it is going to be 740 multiplied by summation of c sorry c of that particular which is going to be 0 0.158 divided by summation of c so please note a t is a bottom story so we have to take the summation of c for the bottom story which is 1.176 so in that manner you can find the column moment for the rest of the columns also okay once you do that the next step will be to find out the b moment so before finding b moment it is important to find out the girder factor sorry it is important to find out the distribution factor for beams so it is going to be summation of summation of g divided by so g of the particular beam divided by summation of g so at the for the first joint there is only one beam so it is going to be 0 0.202 divided by 0 0.202 it is 1 okay for the second join E, there are two members ED and EF. So DFP for member beam ED is going to be 0.19 divided by summation of 0.19 plus 0.132, it is 0.59. Similarly, you can find out the distribution factor for other beams also. Once you have the distribution factors, now that you find out the beam moment, what you have to do is find the sum of all the column member moments at that particular joint multiply it with the distribution factor of p g by g summation of g so this is going to be 122.2 here for the second joint e and both the column moment 26.6 and 114.5 and then multiply this total value with 0.59 you get 83.25 if you multiply this total column moment with 0.41 you get this feeling similarly you can note down all the column moment values sorry note down all the b moment values also once you have the all the b moment column moment values and b moment values you can note down the 
window moment diagram as well which will be similar to that in the previous case something looking like this area negative here it is positive and negative going to negative here it also is a positive and going to negative all the values are already listed in the table say for example for the value is 99.4 so this is going to be 9.4 so similarly you can complete the building moment diagram and so that's it for today's lecture thank you